so good to be here this morning. We count it an honor to worship with you. We're talking about living a lifestyle of honor, and part of our worship is we're going to see, as a matter of fact, I'll just read it right now, Malachi 1, 5 through 8, sort of our foundational scripture in living a lifestyle of honor, it says, yes, take a good look and you'll see how faithfully I've loved you and you'll want even more. I want more of God, huh? Saying, may God be greater beyond the borders of Israel. Isn't it true that a son honors his father and a worker his master or his boss? So if I'm your father, God's saying this today from his word, if I'm your father, where's your honor? Where's my honor? If I'm your boss, where, where, where's the respect? God of the angel armies is calling you on the carpet. Wow. He said, you priests, he talks to the leaders first. You despise me. And they said, how? How in the world do we despise you? By your shoddy, sloppy, defiling worship. We're not going to have that in the house, right? If you came to seek a person, let me defer you to Jesus. So go ahead right now. Just begin to praise God in your own way. Come on, let's just lift up the name of Jesus here today. God, we don't want any sloppy worship. We are just going to worship you in spirit and in truth. We love you. There's none above you, no person, no place, no thing. And, oh, Father, we're going to give you the highest praise because you deserve all the glory and all the honor and all the power and all the dominion. Thank you for at times you even as a loving father bring conviction and even bring correction through your word by your spirit. He said, you ask, what do you mean defiling? What, what's defiling about it? When you say the altar of God's not important anymore, you don't need church, doesn't take all that. The worship of God is no longer a priority. You know, these are things that the word talks to us about. Don't forsake the assembling of, of yourself together. More is happening for you right now for your current situation and things are being imparted to you and the word is coming to you in truth so that things you're learning today, you are going to need it for your future. Challenger, challenges are ahead. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all, no matter, no matter what you're going through today, whether you feel it or not, just know that God is going to work on your behalf and help you through that spot. And then we have good people around here. And then and when you offer worthless animals, like for sacrifices and worship, animals like you're trying to get rid of it, blind and sick, and crippled animals, isn't that defiling? Try a trick like that with your bank or your senator. How honorable would that be? God of the Ar uh, angel armies is asking. Thank you, Father. You could be seated. Thank you, Christy. We, we are on the topic of how to live the lifestyle, not acting right on Sunday and then putting on our other self Monday. Uh, when we go into our world, we're not trying to bring attention to us. We're just going to operate with the character and the love of God, become more like Jesus, and that's just going to be seen wherever we go, living the lifestyle of honor. Say lifestyle. It's not hit and miss. This is something we do every single day. See, God, God gets upset and even grieved when He's dishonored or we dishonor other people, whether they're acting right or not. See, I can't treat people that are acting wrong in a positive manner. Yes, you can, because if you know Jesus, the Word of God says the same love God has towards us comes on the inside of us so that we have the love of God shed abroad in our spirit and our heart by the Holy Spirit, and we can walk in love toward the unlovely. We can go ahead and just stay, uh, you know, just quiet as somebody might be speaking a word that really just, just is offensive, but you just go ahead and, and you take it. Some of us need to take some more rather than say some more. You know, we, you know, sometimes people, I just got to give a sense, I just got to give you, well, I got to give you a what am I saying? i got to give you a piece of my mind. And you know what? Go to the love chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 8, and see what God gives us as a parameter of what we can say, what we can do, how we should act. Well, it seems good. We better skip over there. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Ready? Say it with me. 
I'm going to live the lifestyle of honor every day, wherever I go. You know, the more you hang out with God, the more you're going to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. And, and again, I, I'm not, the, you're going to be, uh, beat people over the head with the, with, the, with the big old Bible. No, but we're living epistles, and we've been talking about that. Are we living honorably? We're rep- representing Christ in the right way, truth in the right way. Truth is a person. His name's Jesus. Truth is not just a page of written word. It is a person. His name is Jesus. If you're wondering how many ways there is to heaven, there's one way. One way. One God. Always has been. Always will be. The Word of God says in Isaiah 43, 10, I'll get back to 1 Corinthians 13. He says, but you are my witnesses, Israel, says the Lord. You are my servant. You've been chosen to know me, believe in me, and understand I alone am God. There's no other God. There never has been. There never will be. 1 John 4, 4 in the message, my dear children, you come from God and belong to God if you received him, and you have already won a big victory over those false teachers, for the spirit in you is far stronger than anything in the world. Listen, the only way you're going to have your kids overcome that, 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 that just lies of the enemy is to fill them with the truth, get them around the truth. Oh, but friends reject them uh, in, in, in school. Well, that's why they need to come here and get some friends with positive peer pressure so they can go face something the next day that the, that the world's trying to pump. Uh, the public schools are trying to pump all kinds of wrong lifestyles in our kids' life. But God said, I am God. There is no other. Never has been. Never will be. And His Word is truth. And the more we honor His Word, the more we're honoring Him. They have books and libraries now that talk about the most crazy stuff that no child needs to hear. Neither have, so they give out sheets, all these different options of what they'd like to be. I'm, I'm, I think I'll be a, a woman. I think I'll be transgender. I, I think I'll be an alcoholic. I think I'll be uh, uh, all these different lifestyles. God only has one check, well, two check boxes. Because he's God. He made the male and female no other. And if you don't get that truth deep within your kids' hearts, there's a foul enemy out there trying to twist the truth and, and trying to get them to think these other lifestyles are normal. Being a man if you're a man is normal. Being a woman if you're a woman is normal. I've made them male and female. God, Jesus is my Savior, and Jesus is my Lord. That means I'm going to submit to His Word no matter what the world's saying. I don't care what the world's saying. They're confused. They're messed up. They don't have any truth. God's Word really tells us who can marry, a man and a woman. These two shall become one flesh. You're going to upset the card here, Pastor Coin. I'm already deep into it. I might as well just go with it. I'm so tired of the lies. I'm so tired of the lies. That's why we just don't receive a word here Sunday and then act all crazy the rest of the week because our kids need to see it here and they need to see it there. No wonder why the Word says you shall talk about these truths when you're sitting down, we're at the breakfast table, when something wrong comes on TV, when this spout of lies are are coming up, and and then, 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 then our kids go to a particular school they went to a long time ago where they didn't believe in miracles, they talked down healing, they talked about being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. Don't speak against what you don't know anything about. People are down on a lot of times what people are not up on. I will present line upon line, and you make, your, you, you make your decision. I'm going to give you what God says. And if you're saved, you got the spirit of truth on the inside of you. So no matter what environment that you're in, no matter how much Bible you know, the Holy Spirit's witnessing this is right, this is wrong. This is out or this is in. First John 4, 4 says, my dear children, you come from God and you belong to God. You've already won a big victory over those false teachers, over those false, false, false teachers. Anything contrary to the word is false. 
Anything contrary to the word of God is a lie. Truth liberates. Lies bind. Lies will take you back into a world that you've been delivered from and free from. And, and the word says, if you continue in my word, I'll be, you're my disciples indeed. You'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Well, Pastor Cohen, you're going to become very unpopular with this word. I don't care. I love you. But if I know certain things God doesn't condone, and yet I condone it, it would send you to a place called hell. There's a heaven to gain. There's a hell to shun. There's things to do and things not to do. There's lifestyles that you are, not what you think you should be. You look into the mirror of the Word of God, James tells us, said you better be looking at that daily because you got to fix some stuff. you got to make sure you're seeing yourself right, seeing the way God says you are, seeing the way His Word says you are, seeing the way because if if you stop looking at that mirror, you'll forget who you are in Christ. And you start buying into the lies of the world. It is disgusting. But Pastor Court, I am here today in one of those lifestyles. We love you. But let me tell you something. I, I w- I'd be remiss to say, listen, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian, and I have a biblical worldview. So I'm not here to offend you, but my God, there's no other God, never has been, never will be. This is my standard, so I'll, I'll share the standard with you, and I'll love you through whatever you're in, but I care enough about you to tell you the truth. I'm not going to agree with a lie, because I would condone and put more power behind, power behind your lifestyle. Before you get all uppity, some of you Christians have been saved with Abraham. Listen, what were you delivered from? Do you remember? Do you remember? Stop being so high-minded. You won't get down and say, with a, say, hey, I used to be a homosexual. I came to the light, man. I was totally unfulfilled, and this is what God, I found out. God gave me my identity, and he began to tell me who I am in Christ, what I have in Christ, what I will be in Christ, and say, you know what? Let me, let me walk with you, because I know exactly where you are. Or you're into pornography. You're into, God even deals with our offering there. He said, when you, when you give, you're giving me some blind, blind goats and things you want to get rid of. I get upset when people will tip a waiter more than they'll tithe to God. We shouldn't be tipping God. We, we go by his word. We're tithers. We're givers. Sometimes God will even prompt us to do special seeds. My wife and I went out to Rama where we, where we graduated from Bible college and we're on leadership team there, and uh, we had a goal of getting to a certain point financially in this particular area, and we're about 80% there. And I was led to, you know, this is not the devil when God says, hey, I want you to sow a bigger seed. You can't rebuke that. Man, that went quiet. Oh, Lord, help me. So anyway, we ended up we ended up sowing a significant seed that brought us down from 100% we were believing God for, we were at 80%, brought us down to 60%. And since we've been home, we've already gone over the top of 100%. I know there's some people say, don't talk about how this church is blessed because they might stop giving. Wait a minute, I'd rather give to the work of God because it's not just given to us, it's, it's about expanding the gospel. It's about, listen, those seats aren't faith seats. They're real seats we paid for. And this air conditioning, come on, I put air conditioning in my car last week. I couldn't believe it. I came in with a jacket, left getting my short sleeve on, you know. And, and so anyway, where am I? <laughs> oh yeah, so, you know, God, you don't have to pray about what God already told you to do. So what do you think about tithing? I think nothing about tithing. God said to tithe before the law, during the law, after the law. Hebrews chapter 7 says, and men that receive tithes here receive the money. But there he receives the one who lives. The one who's there, no other. And boy, I tell you what, and we've walked that way for many, many decades now. You might say, how old are you? None of your business. (laughs) But tell that person next to you, I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, you look good for your age. So, um, these principles work. I'm not talking about something that doesn't work. Over the years, we just made good decisions and followed God's word. And, this, and we, we, we operate this way in this church to where this camp is debt-free and we have healthy reserves. <laughs> That's the way it should be. 
You say, I don't believe in, I don't, I don't believe in having store, storehouses. Well, wait a minute. He said he blessed your storehouse. Where's your, where's your saving account? And by the way, if you've pushed God out of your budget, you might want to adjust if you want God to be your source. Wow, don't you love me? I love you. The word is this. The word is that. And goes on in 1 John 4, 4. And again, some of you get nervous. There will be no other offerings today. But I've told people before, if I were in your situation, I would reduce my budget. I don't care if I have to move or sell a car. When you smelt the leather and you bought into that $70,000 car. Oh, Jesus. I don't like this church anymore. Well, that's okay. No, it's not okay. <laughs> Just telling you the truth. These people belong to the Christ-denying world. There's a Christ-denying world. If it's a Christ-denying world, it's a truth-denying world. It's a, it's a world that doesn't believe God is the only way. Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. They say, you know what? We'll all end up the same place. I'll just go ahead and choose whatever path I think is right. Well, if it's anything other than Jesus, you're on a wrong path. You need to get into the right path because he dogmatically is the only one, the Son of God, that was sent to this earth, that never sinned, lived 33 years of sinless life, so he could die all the times we did. And you know what? I'm getting ready to say something to you, so buckle up. You already buckled up. Um, Jesus came to die on the cross for our sin, all those shameful acts. And when he died and he was innocent, he went to the portals of hell, and he, he paid the, the price for freedom. The word says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. He died for my shame. He died for my pain and my sins. Thank God all my shame on him, and in him no more shame on me. Glory to God. I said glory to God. You might have a lockup right here. Tell that person next to you, shame on him. No more shame on you. You don't even want to talk to each other today. I saw that. <laughs> he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes, we're healed. It doesn't matter what you've done in Christ. The Word of God says in the Old Testament that, you know what, they sacrificed innocent bulls and goats and pigeons and all that kind of stuff as a type of what Jesus was going to come and do here on this earth. And those acts of sacrifice in the Old Testament, thank God, were no longer in that day. But God says, your sacrifice now is according to, follow my word no matter what the world's saying. Follow my truth, no matter what the world's saying. Get that truth in, in your heart and your kids and your youth. Listen, we need to support our youth going to camp. I want to be the biggest youth group this year at camp. You might say, you want to boast, Pastor Corn? No. I want our kids to get in an environment where they see an honoring environment, a fun environment, a, an environment that they can learn and they can get some positive peer pressure because the days, they're, they're in negative peer pressure every day, every day, every day, every day. Some of your parents have started to get your kids consistently here on Wednesday night, so you're hearing me. They have ball teams, that kind. I can't help all that. You need to support that. If you can't be here Wednesday, you need to have your kids here on Sunday because some truth is going down that will set them free, that you've been talking to them about, but it takes the anointing about that word to get them to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Moving bourbons, destroying yokes. The Holy Spirit's in this house. The Holy Spirit's in my house, in my heart. In, 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 I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit, and the Word says He's called the Spirit of truth. All of our kids have got filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't shame that. There's no shame in that. Second to being sa saved, the most important thing in my life was being filled with the Holy Spirit. I was in college and not living right, and yet, yet, Thank God, I, I, I just, something happened in football, and, and I just, instead of going south, I went north all totally after God, but I couldn't move forward till I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I got filled with Him. He's a strengthener. He's a counselor. He's a guide. Uh, he, he confirms the Word. He, he, he reminds you what the Word says. 
the Holy Spirit plus a, plus a heart filled with the Word of God is a, great, is a great sensitive conscience not to yield to the lies of the flesh. Galatians chapter 5 says there's the fruit of the flesh. Everything you see in the world starts there. But then there's a the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, long kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. These are things in Christ we can develop. And there's coming a point that we can say absolutely no to that because we're walking in truth. And then the Word says, listen, submit to God. Submit to His Word. Submit to His truth. And then you can resist that negative junk and the, the devil's a fallen angel and he'll, he will run from you as in, in terror. There's the flesh you can walk in, which is dishonorable. There's the fruit of the Spirit you can walk in. It's honorable, becoming more like Jesus. No wonder why the world, the, the word, no, the world doesn't say this, the word, God says, listen, I want to develop you so you begin to walk in the Spirit, in the fruit of the Spirit, with the power of the Holy Spirit, with, with the enablement of the Holy Spirit, with the truth of the Holy Spirit, with the strength of the Holy Spirit, and don't fulfill the lust of your flesh. If you walk in the Spirit, you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. I'm dealing with a couple churches right now that are dealing with rebellion. That's not God. The Word says in, in, in Galatians 5 about the fruit of the flesh, it also includes division. You, you start going around somewhere causing division, you better watch your step. You better watch division in your life, with your wife, your single life, kids. How are you speaking about your family? How are you speaking about the church? How are you saying, I heard Pastor Coin today or whatever, and I don't agree with that. Well, I, I'm not changing. How can I change when God's word is flawless? How can I change when God's word is forever settled? Thank God for the truth. You said, where's 1 Corinthians 13? I don't know. God's got something to say to the world that has rejected truth. Revelation twenty two eighteen 18 says, And if any man shall take away from the words of this book, of the word of God, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. Never say again God sent that person to hell. He did not. He had to create a place where the angels that rebelled against God in Genesis, a third of the angels fell. He had to contain them in a place. The only thing that will keep you out of heaven is rejecting Jesus. Say it again. There's a place called heaven. There's a, there's a heaven to gain. There's a hell to shun. God gives us every opportunity to receive him to our last breath here on this earth. Never write anybody off. Never write anybody off. Don't write anybody off. Don't give up on them. Keep praying. Keep tearing off blinders. Keep sending perfect labors. God, draw them to Jesus. Draw them to Jesus. That's how you pray for the lost. You don't say, God, save my son. He's already paid the price for your son to be saved. He just needs to see it, receive it, become it, walk it out. Psalm 139 says, even before there was a word on my tongue, still unspoken, behold, O Lord, you know it all. Joshua 21.45 says, not one word failed from all the good words God spoke to the house of Israel. Everything came out right. Say it again, many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver us out of them all. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up in judgment to condemn us. No, and that's condemned. God helps us with that. Proverbs 35 says, every word of God is flawless. Every word of God is flawless. Flawless. Every word of God is flawless. He's a shield to those who take refuge in him. Matthew 24, 35 says, heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear, never pass away, last forever. They will never wear out. What's your house built on? What's your life built on? What's your finances built on? Storms are coming. What's your health built on? Storms are coming. 
what, what's, what's your whatever, what, you know, what were you delivered from? And now you're saying, oh, grace allows me to do everything I used to do now because it's grace. Grace is not, is not opening the doors to everything we were delivered from and everything that is a mess out there in the world, contrary to the word of God. Grace is divine power to say no to the things that we used to be bound to say yes to. That doctrine is not a right doctrine. People and churches have bought into it. Now they're having beer with Jesus. They're having after parties with alcohol. What? Why does the world want what we got if we got what they have? So, Lord, you're dealing with every area of the life. Listen, I, I don't touch alcohol. It killed my grandfather, and it almost killed my dad, and I better know what is behind me because the word warns me, don't you look at that wine when it's really good and, and, and whatever. And, and because you know what? It will lead you to have a dense, desensitized conscience, and every single one of us here did things we never would have if we, if we just partake of the place called spirits. Come get your spirits here. That means come get the influence on your life. I'm only yielded to the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm new wine. Uh, you don't get hangovers with me. You get filled with me. You get empowered with me. You become more like Jesus. And when those same, pre those same challenges try to come back into your life, you begin to say no. And thank God now you have a small group where you know these folks will help me walk in the truth, speak into my life, and we can move forward and be encouraged to be like Jesus. Hey, Austin. Welcome, wife. Young man I invited to brave. I'm glad you're here. Living the lifestyle of reach. If you don't have a church, I'm working on you. Get connected. Booker T. Washington. He said a lie doesn't become the truth. Wrong doesn't become right. And evil doesn't become good just because it's accepted by the majority and the world. A lie doesn't become the truth. Wrong doesn't become right. The evil doesn't become good just because it's accepted in the world. That's how I took, told you about uh, James, right? It talks about looking to the mirror. Did I, did I quote that? Did I? All right. Well, how many of you just got up and just came today? Lord, no. You look in that mirror and say, Woo, I got to fix what's out of order. Get into the Word. I, I got to fix uh, how the world's thinking. Get into the Word. I, I got to fix myself on who I am in Christ. Got to look at it. Got to look at it. Got to look at it. Because you become what you look at. You become associations. You, you become the five, five closest friends around you. Say, man, I could never walk away from my friends. You better. Why wouldn't you want to go in the right direction? Don't let them peel you into their direction. You've got your own response to every situation and scenario in this world. But my wife made me do it. No, you'd made, you, you accepted it. Excuse me. I just... My wife is awesome. Whatever she, yes, she is. Come on. You know, sometimes you can act the word of God and look like you're handpacked. Does anybody know what that means? It's sanctified. I say, oh, Lord, he just, he just, uh, I'm not trying to say, he, he just bounced a participant. Uh, anyway, what am I saying? Help me out, Dwayne. You don't even know. I don't either. <laughs> you know what? Following, following the truth sometimes can make, make others appear as if you're being taken advantage of. But the word says you can do nothing for the truth. I mean, nothing against the truth, but for the truth. The church of God is the pillar of living truth. 
is the pillar. Why you come here? Because, man, sometimes God helps us make some adjustments. He changes our lenses. He redoes a prescription. He, he, he helps us to see what he sees rather than renewing my mind all the time of the world's trying to say I am. We love everybody in any lifestyle. So before you start putting, putting out transgender and homosexuality, how about pornography? How about uh, being dishonorable to your wife? How about, how about uh, being, being good on Sundays and ain't know th- nothing about God on Mondays? So th- let's not judge anybody. Say, ooh, that's a bigger sin than that. No. Listen, uh, stop that. You are welcome here no matter what you come out of, but I'm going to love you enough to tell you the truth, a biblical worldview to accept or you do the other, which is reject, which is the only thing, again, that will keep you out of heaven. You know, when you talk about living the lifestyle of honor, dishonor upsets God. It does. Dishonor for him and his word and his ways, if we reject that, dishonors him. There's some of you right now, you feel dishonored because someone doesn't respect you enough to listen to you. People that don't respect you won't listen to you. What if we respect God as our highest authority, as our yes and no, as our foundation, as the way we think, as the way we act? There was a homosexual one time that I was watching his testimony, and it just bears repeating. And, and he and another guy were there just having some coffee, and all of a sudden they see just about two or three guys having a Bible study. One of the guys said, I dare you to go talk to them. I dare you to go talk to them. So he drummed up enough, enough energy and enough confidence to go and talk to those, those uh, Christians that were, had their word open, and they were just reading so the guy goes up to those few guys and says, what do you think about homosexuality? I say, well, well, first of all, I'm a Christian. I believe God loves everybody. He tries to help all of us. We've all been brought out of the pit and set back on the right stuff on him, the rock. And said, also, you see us opening the Word of God. It's, it's the way we think. It's, if God is our Savior and God is our Lord, then this is the way I operate. This is, I'm, I have a biblical worldview. And there's like slapping that guy with a wet rag. But I tell you what, they didn't go over there. They didn't go, he didn't go over there and say, you know what, I'm not so sure. My thoughts are evolving on different lifestyles now. Get back in the book. Get back in the truth. I don't want to offend you, but if, if maybe, you know, we're here just... Just, um, just, I'm just going to tell you what God says, but in the right spirit. I know I'm fired up today. So what happened, Pastor Corn? God did. I, I mean, you all praying for me, right? You all, do you all want me to back down? I, I, I believe leaders that are walking with God should be getting on the rooftop with a clarion call. The way you're going will destroy you if it's not aligned with God. So you're going to tell me as a leader, uh, lies are like, are like bridge out. Bridge out. Am I going to go up to somebody and say, you know what, you might want to consider thinking about the truth. No, you Truth is the truth. It doesn't change. We do become more like Him. Thank you. Getting back to that story, he said, You know what? I so res- this homosexual said, I so respected those guys. They let me know that according to my truth, listen, you can have your own truth if it's God's word. That's your truth. Everybody's about, it's, this is my truth. No. If it doesn't line up with the Word of God, it's not your truth. If Jesus is Lord, you've sort of lost your opinion in many ways. I don't, and when you get into Christ, okay, I'm getting back. 
So he's so respected, and it so branded him with, with them being honest with him, just honest and sincere. Stop going out there and say, you're going to hell. You know, most people know it. And some people say, I'm bringing all my buddies with me. I'm like, what? You love them. Speak the truth in love. Don't act like me today. In the, in the, in the uh, believe what I'm saying, but end of the word. But you don't go in a coffee house embarrassing people and calling them out and making a scene. Even if that guy would have rejected him, I, I would have just, I, I, I would have just sort of just left the scene. It so impacted this gentleman, and by the way, no matter what lifestyle your kids are in right now that are contrary to the Word of God, they're branded, and you place truth in their life that'll never come back void, and they're thinking about things, that's why they get upset at you, and you didn't say a thing, because you stand for truth, you love them, you pray for them, and by the way, make sure you're livid in front of them. This guy was so branded, so branded with that moment that when he went home, actually, they invited him to church. He's like, invite me to church, but you're saying that God's Word doesn't condone certain things. Yeah, but God loves you, and God wants to draw you into truth, and God wants to help you change. He, he doesn't just, he does that slogan, just do it, you can't just do it unless you get filled with the Holy Spirit, unless you get a, become a whole new creation in Christ, unless you receive His nature, His life, His nature, the fruit of the Spirit, all these things. You can't just say, no, just do it. You can't, well, just be saved, receive Jesus, become a new person. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, get the empowerment. Invited Him to church. You all thought I forgot about that. And when he was going to sleep, he, he, he just couldn't rest, and he kept thinking about those guys, kept thinking about those guys. <clears throat> he ended up coming to church, and they didn't know it. He slipped in the service. He said, I don't even remember what was said. I know that what the Word of God was going forward, and all I could do, there was a presence of God there. How many know we got to have the presence of God in our life, in our homes, in our church? He said, I was just over to, to myself, and in just this environment, there's a presence of God like I'd never sensed before, but I wanted. I didn't understand, but I wanted it, and I heard truth, and I just began to profusely weep and weep and weep. God was revealing himself to this person. Sometimes your kids will reject you, but I tell you what, if you're not their perfect labor, there's someone coming. There's someone dealing with them. There, there's someone, and you just keep praying for them, tearing out blinders. God, send perfect labors. God, draw them to Jesus. And then God, that's you. They're your kids. I thank you. I don't pray for them to be saved. I'm saying that again, aren't I? Did I get that? No. Yes? Okay. God's already done all the saving He's going to do with this world. We just need to receive what He's already done. Jesus is not going to come back and die on the cross for all of our sins. We were included past, present, and future in that great work of redemption. That guy was so, so touched. He got born again. Instantly. Instantly something changed. And all of a sudden, God took the one-two of lifestyles contrary to the Word of God, took it out of him, took it out of him, and he got in the right environment. He began to fellowship in right environments. He, 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 he got small groups so that we can be influenced to keep going on. God said, don't forsake the sum of yourself together as some has, but all the more when you see the day of Jesus approaching, because we need the encouragement. We need the truth. This church will never be a pillar of what I think. This church will always have the pillar of truth, which is the Word of God, by the way, no, nothing left out from Genesis to Revelation. You will not force me to take, and this government will not force me to take chapter out of the Bible. Just won't do it. We 
think about honor in God. Honor can mean great physical weight. You're saying, how does that apply? It could mean to be heavy, weighty, or quantity of a thing. In other words, why is honor weighty? Because we're not taking God and His Word lightly. We're not taking people lightly. What's our mission here? We love God. We love everyone that's living right and walking right, good attitude. Everything's wonderful and beautiful. We're tiptoeing through the tulips. Somebody better agree with me on that. You better be ready to go to, to, to work. And all of a sudden, all right, stand up, please, I think. Everybody. We're to love everybody. I'm not condoning what somebody's doing, but I love them enough to help them to try to come out of that lifestyle. I don't know the people that we've walked with and they changed. And, and listen to me, this is really critical. They, they received Jesus, became born again. They, they um, started walking in truth and things were just being, uh, the power of God was just, just causing layers to be peeled away. That was not like Jesus. Let me tell you something. The way that you became free in Christ is the way that you stay free in Christ. You just can't let your mind wandering because the enemy's saying nothing happened to you there. You are whatever. We always keep the Word of God before our eyes, right? Let's do this daily. Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. When I look in the mirror today, I had a bad hair day. I'm sorry, I just had to have a little levity there because it's but I have, you know, I'm looking in that word every day. Ooh, that's an attitude that doesn't fit that picture. It's an attitude that nah, honor, dishonorable. How, what about? I wonder if we all begin to say. Uh, I wonder if we begin to say is what I'm about to say or do. Is it going to be honorable? Is it going to honor God and His word? Don't worry, you guys who are Type A's. I'll get to First Corinthians 13, four through eight. I think next week. Pray with me. Father, thank you for your word today. God, I want to thank you for loving me enough to bring adjustments in my life. You're a loving Father that not only loves but also corrects us because you're warning us and you're helping us become more like Jesus so we don't go down that path of destruction. I'm just going to take a moment and thank God for my salvation. I wish you would do the same. God, thank you. Oh, my goodness. No matter what happens to me, no matter when, I know I'm going to heaven. Thank you for the truth. Thank you. Heaven's more real than this place because it made it through spoken words. God said it. And it was so. Thank you. Father, I want to thank you also. Not only was I water baptized to rededicate my life to the Lord, and if you need to, sign up. Easter, we're going to stand before the people and God saying, God, we're not ashamed of you. I'm just going to display on the outside the work that's already been done on the inside. Father, I want to thank you for the day I was water baptized. I want to thank you for the day that I filled, I got filled with the Holy Spirit, the Word, and the Spirit, and my good, the good people I was around, good church uh, uh, that was in my life, good, good leaders of character were over my life, and they set the model of, of serving my way to my destiny. Thank you for all those times. And it's changed my life. I did all I know to do today. To speak your word, truth and love, anything out of love or anything today, forgive me. But Father, I know a clear end call is going out. As we bow our head and close our eyes right now, I'm getting ready to pray for somebody that does not know Jesus as a personal Savior, and you say, man, God is drawing me to Jesus. Were you here today? Say, you know what? I, I'm a Christian, but I've slipped into things that were not, that were contrary to the Word of God, and I just want to, just want to ask God to forgive me. If you're here today, say, Pastor Coyne, I want, I want you to include me in prayer to receive Jesus today. I'm getting ready to pray. You just stay right where you are. If, if that's you, say, Pastor Coyne, would you include me in this prayer? Lift up your hand right now. 
Come on. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. With all boldness, in your own heart, between you and God, I want everybody to pray, especially those who raise their hand or if you didn't raise your hand, but you want to be saved. Say, God, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he lived an innocent life so that he could pay the price for my sins, my shame, my guilt. In Christ, I receive you, Jesus, as my personal Savior. And I receive you as my Lord. Let me pray for you, Father. Give them a hunger for the Word of God like never before. Give them a hunger to uh, just close their mouth, go into their world, and just see people that, that if you said that you're changed, they'd say, oh, how long is it going to last this time? Just close your mouth and just act it out. Get to the Word. Get to the prayer. All the things we teach, get good leaders over your life good friends begin putting your hand to the plow of all that people have done in the past now we're going to pay it back I receive you Jesus I receive you as my Lord your word now becomes my final authority because it is, it is the truth thank you for teaching me if, in Jesus name amen let's just thank God for those who received the Lord today give them some encouragement